Hey YouTube, I'm Shay with Tech with Shay, obviously. Uh, today, I'm finally gonna take you outside and show you the shed server room and everything I've done so far. Let's uh, head on out. All right, and here it is, the mighty server room. So as you can see, it uh, looks uh, like a room inside of a room. Um, I was lucky enough to get most of the supplies for free as I know a few uh, contractors working in insulation. Um, I really just had to pay for some like door hardware and some odds and ends. Um, anyway, so let's uh, have a look inside. It's quite loud in here. Hit the light there. So I'm inside now, and I'm gonna point out a few things. Today I'm really just gonna talk about the uh, climate and um, cooling and all that fun stuff, uh, because it's really a work in progress. So um, I've got my Aruba network switch. I'll show you uh, up close here in a second. Um, this is connected to my switch in the basement with uh, 10 gigabit uh, fiber. And um, then I've got a couple more fiber runs that come down to my, uh, my single server at the moment and um, all my outdoor security cameras and automation stuff runs through here as well. Um, so I'm gonna bring you in here and uh, show you around. So I'm going handheld here, so don't mind the shakiness. Um, so there's the switch here. Uh, basically, the um, first two on the patch bay or patch panel here, those are my original Cat6 runs that go into the basement. Um, following that, We've got um, three more here. So this yellow one is my access point that's out in the carport. And then the next two go to my little security panel here, which um, was an old DSC alarm, which has been modified to uh, house my Arduino and a Orange Pi um, microcomputer, which kind of runs all the uh, automation and um, climate control in here, which I'll get to in a second. Um, next after that, the next five are security cameras. And um, after those, um, actually, actually the next six are security cameras, I think. Oh, I don't even know anymore. I should label this at some point. Um, and then I got another one that goes out to my, um, my shed control system and my Apple AirPlay for my backyard speakers, which are located up here, which you may have seen in other videos. I used to have a bunch of network switches up here, um, but rather than relocating uh, or rerunning all these cables outside, I just figured I'd drop a uh, little uh, wall mount patch panel in there and then all the original cabling stays intact. So um, that covers kind of the, a bit of the networking. I've got two fiber runs that will go down to the servers. One's in use at the moment, one is not. And then one of these uh, connects to my basement patch panel, um, which connects the switches together. So that's all kind of comes down here and then we'll get to the server. So right now my Unraid server is in here um, and my battery backup unit and that's about it. Um, it's been really nice having this in here because it's so loud in my basement. Um, I've got uh, plans to put in a small cabinet in here at some point. The other issue uh, currently is everything's running off an extension cord that's plugged into the side of my house um, because the power out here in the shed wasn't enough to run the servers and the air conditioning. Um, I do have this guy ran. Um, it's a uh, four conductor um, outdoor rated cable. And uh, that will run original or eventually two circuits in here, one for the AC and one for the servers. But at the moment it's just kind of half ran. As you can see, it's kind of tucked under out of the way and I haven't finished it. In fact, the whole cable runs not great at the moment, but I want, one day I'll, uh, put in some conduit and do it correctly. Um, next we've got my air conditioning. Now this is gonna be very uh, alarming for some people. Um, this was a normal household Danby uh, AC unit. It's a very old one. Um, I took it apart and modified it so that I can control it with my um, node red system here. So as you can see, yes, if I touch that, I will get electrocuted. Luckily this room is closed and I'm the only one with the key. Um, but this will be fixed at some point. I just needed it to just get set up and running. Um, the other thing is I monitor the current as part of like a redundancy feature. So I know that if the AC is 
drawing an incorrect amount of current when it's on, I can uh, detect issues with the compressor or the fan. All this redundancy things because, you know, it's a server room and I want to make sure that everything's staying correct. I also have a, a bathroom fan up here, which is also controlled um, by Node Red. And uh, essentially, based on the outdoor temperature and the temperature in here, uh, the system will automatically choose what to use, whether it uses the fan or the AC. Uh, it's been working really well all through summer. Um, I'll go over some of the, the numbers and graphs um, just a bit later on in the video, but I wanted to kind of explain how I'm controlling the climate in here. So far, I haven't had any issues. My humidity is on the lower side. I've seen it drop as low as 30, which is okay, but it's not really, it's kind of below the recommended numbers for uh, a server room. Um, flipping back over here uh, to my little panel here, I've also got, this is the uh, switch for the fan, um, the bathroom fan, so it's a Wi-Fi switch, and then I've also got a Wi-Fi switch for this light. Um, and those are all kind of configured and running on this closed network, um, my IoT network, which is, again, um, also linked to these via Cat5. Um, air intake, I've got a furnace filter here, um, kind of shoved into uh, a little uh, cavity I made. And on the other side, I've got a old speaker grill, which is gonna stop any rodents from getting in there. So that's kind of the, uh, the gist of it. Again, it's a very much a work in progress, which is why I'm just kind of doing this part one, um, kind of vlog style, I guess. So we'll call this vlog, server room vlog one. Um, let's go inside and take a look at the, uh, the actual numbers um, and my control systems. Actually, before I do that, I'll just show you here as well. This is the uh, bathroom fan exhaust, um, which, at some point, I kind of want to reroute this outside along with the AC, but it hasn't been an issue venting in here. Um, I just didn't want anyone to, if I put vents on the outside, you know, people might wonder what's in here and might think it's like a, some sort of a grow utility perhaps and then break in and then I don't want anything like that. All right, welcome back to my basement. Let's take a look at a few things here. I'm gonna start by uh, going through what um, I control through Home Assistant. So um, let's look on the screen here. So. We're gonna start with power consumption. So what I've done here is um, I've added a uh, server room section under my power consumption tab. Um, also, I've got my, my server UPS status in here. Um, so I've done also a few calculations here. So let's start with um, current power uh, usage right down here. So this 382 watts, what that does is that's um, taking the UPS load as well as adding in um, the air conditioning load with my CT clamps that you saw earlier when it's on, or uh, the bathroom fan load, which uh, is included in the UPS load because the bathroom fan is essentially wired into the output of the UPS. Um, I also added some handy calculations to let me know what my average is here. So real time is what percentage of my entire usage the server room's currently using. Um, my average today so far or, or my total today so far, and then uh, for the month, 19.3% um, of my power usage last month, month was the uh, server room. And uh, I can also look up here and see how many kilowatt hours um, the server room uses per day. And you can see it just kind of goes up until it stops, and then it resets and then goes to the next day. Um, I'll show you what I, what I also do with that in Grafana in a second. Um, so let's go back to my home page here. So we've got our server room control system or panel here, which doesn't give us a whole lot. Um, it just gives us our status. For example, exhaust fan rent running. You can see when it's been cycled, which isn't very often, because um, right now it's kind of warm outside for the exhaust fan. Then we can also go see um, over here, it was using the AC um, yesterday in the uh, evening because it was a little bit warmer outside. We can also click here, and uh, this shows me my... Um, kind of my history in the last 24 hours. So you can follow, this is the inside temperature of the server room, and I've got a threshold set up so that when it hits 26 degrees in the server room, it will switch to the AC. And uh, you can also see that the AC curve is really wide, and this was designed um, just to save power. Uh, originally, I had it just you know working like a standard AC where it would keep it pretty even at the temperature set, but the AC would cycle basically every like two minutes. So with this, um, there's actually a fair amount of time in between 
um, cycles and it gives the AC enough time to actually become efficient because for the first like two or three minutes while it's on, it's not very efficient as it's cooling down all the, um, uh, the condenser and uh, the condenser so that uh, it can actually generate cold air. So um, that's kind of just a, a little overview and you can see here this is where the fan cycled. The fan is pretty tight um, with the curve. Uh, just like a normal thermostat because the fan is immediate. It's working at 100% efficiency as soon as it's on. Um, so I keep the server room set at 24 degrees. Uh, it's a little on the warm side, but again, trying to save uh, power. During the winter, it's going to be a lot easier. I can probably set the temperature lower. Um, and because it's so cold outside, that'll kind of take care of the cooling aspect. Um, humidity, I track my humidity. You can see when the AC runs, it's was all over the place, but I'll, I'll go in that more, uh, cover that more in uh, Grafana because it's a lot more easy to look at. Um, that's about it. I've got, this is uh, also where I can control what's happening. So I can set to cool only or fan only, um, and that'll choose whether uh, it, well, and then auto, and that chooses which one it should use depending on the temperatures. So let's jump over to Node Red, um, and this is the uh, server room management interface. And this is uh, running on that little Pi that you saw in that cabinet. Um, I decided to run this on a separate device so that in the case of a power outage, I can still keep the uh, management system up for an extended period of time. So this gives me all my stats here. So current temperature in the server room, the air intake temperature. So that's the temperature that of air coming in to the server room. And then the outside temperature. And um, this is all in degrees Celsius, by the way. Sorry, sorry to all my uh, American friends, but um, you can do the conversion if you really want to know what it is in Fahrenheit. Uh, anyways, continuing on. Um, and then humidity is relative uh, percentage, relative humidity, so pretty self-explanatory. So outside, you can see right here, um, the current humidity in the server room is 46. Meanwhile, it's like 70.1 outside. So the insulation is really doing, uh, doing its job. Um, I mean, the, most of this is self-explanatory. Um, let's go to our advanced options. So this now is where I set all my, my uh, thresholds. So for example, um, I'll just go through this quickly. My AC fan selector, that's from my, um, that does, that's not used. That was just kind of copied over from my, uh, my upstairs inside climate control. Um, I also am not using the hysteresis, the auto hysteresis. Uh, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Hysteresis? Maybe someone will correct me. Um, and auto fan speed is not used. Auto fan is used, however, and that means that when the AC kicks on, the fan also kicks on. Uh, it doesn't stay running. Um, so this stuff is used. So emergency AC switch. So if the temperature reaches 30 degrees for whatever reason inside the server room, the system will try to force the AC on. Um, if it continues to rate to rise to up to 35 degrees, it'll force the fan on. This is just kind of a redundancy so that if there's something wrong with the auto and it doesn't switch to the AC automatically, this will supposedly catch it. And if the issue is with the AC, um, or if there's an issue with the AC, it'll switch to the fan automatically. Uh, intake fan switch threshold. So when the temperature is going down, as soon as the intake temperature is 19 degrees Celsius or lower, it'll switch automatically back to fan. Um, if the internal temperature of the server room reaches 26 degrees, it switches to the AC. So that's kind of how I'm determining which one it should use. Um, and down here, so when the fan is running, it will cool the server room down to 0.2 degrees Celsius less than the uh, set temperature, and then it'll shut off, and then it'll wait till it's um, plus 0.1 above the uh, set temperature. And then you'll see here my, my AC is much, it's a much larger swing. And again, it's to save energy. So it will cool the room three degrees Celsius below the set temperature, and it'll allow the temperature to reach one degrees above the set temperature before it cycles on again. Um, please uh, comment if you have any specific questions. I know this is kind of confusing, um, but uh, the rest of it's self-explanatory. This stuff is not used, the 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. check. That's just some experimenting I was doing. Um, and this is how I can manually force the auto mode to AC or fan for testing purposes. All right, that's about it. Let's look at Grafana. Now the fun stuff. Um, so I've got this last seven days showed up or uh, brought up here. And uh, it's just one screen, so I monitor my CPU temperatures, GPU temperatures, and all my hard drive temperatures. And I can compare 
basically what's happening in the server room to what's happening to the uh, server temperatures. Um, so for example, let's go server room inside. Oh, no, so that's humidity. Server room inside temperature. So you can see that's when the AC is running. I had a little incident the other day where it got up to 33 degrees. Um, still working out the bugs on my system. Um, but anyways, you can see there's quite a swing there, and you can see there's actually a slight swing in the um, temperatures of the uh, components in the server as well. But for the most part, nothing's getting to a point where it's danger. Um, and you can see if I go outside, you can see these are the outside temperature swings. So last week it was quite warm, so we were hitting like 32 degrees outside um, with a low of 16 at night. And we'll also check the humidity and the humidity up to 70% during the day and down to like 24 at night. Um, I've got an average setup for the humidity in the server room. And as you can see, despite these massive fluctuations, the um, humidity uh, stays pretty consistent. I don't know why it's not tracking correctly here, but um, I can also go server room inside. So there's the humidity as well. Um, so overall, it's not actually that bad. Um, let's zoom in to a 24 hour period. So from, let's go like this. So this is basically a day starting in the early morning around 7 a.m. gets hot and then goes back down. You can see my server room, it's pretty much consistent because that's that AC running all day. And you can also see the slight temperature changes in the um, components as well and the hard drives. It's pretty static, to be honest. Um, I'm pretty pleased with these results. Over the summer, the AC has ran a lot um, to keep it cool, but I'm thinking during the winter, uh, everything should be a lot more stable. Um, so the other thing I'm gonna show you, um, just for like the super nerds, is I'm gonna show you what the actual flow looks like in Node-RED. Um, so have a look here. This is one of my flows for the sensor interface. And this is the control that actually, um, the flow that controls the cooling and heating in the server room. Um, it's basically a heavily modified version of the same one I'm running uh, in, in my house. If you've seen that video, I'm not sure. Um, but basically I just kind of transition or converted it to work for the server room. Um, anyways. That's really about it, because I, I know one of the biggest questions I got when I said I was going to do the server room was, how am I going to control the humidity and temperature? So I figured I'd cover that in, uh, in this first vlog, um, and uh, hopefully that answers the questions. And uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few vlogs um, over the next, I don't know, nine months or so, and we're going to follow up with the temperature and see how it does during the winter, um, and then spring and fall, essentially. Um, and then uh, I'm slowly going to keep working on the server room and hopefully get my rack in there and add a secondary server, which is probably going to uh, affect my cooling um, because uh, obviously one server generates a lot of heat, two will generate more. And uh, hopefully I'll get my electrical set up and um, yeah, we'll have a complete product one day. I mean, <laughs> probably in a couple of years based on how long it takes me to do stuff. Uh, one of the fun things I'm working on, and I just got to make sure I'm doing this legally and safely, is I'm actually going to reroute my UPS power back into my house um, because it's a pretty big UPS unit in the uh, shed to run one server. It's a uh, smart UPS 3000. And what I'd like to do is have that UPS al also running my network rack in my house, um, as well as some LED lights in the case, uh, in the event the power goes out, just so I have something to, you know, scram so I'm not scrambling in the dark. Uh, we don't get a lot of power outages here, so it's not a big deal. Um, but I don't know. I thought that'd be kind of cool. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, I'll keep trying to make interesting videos. Until next time.